The media has also made a lot of hay about Trump's comment about Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer, famous golfer. I mean, I'm like more famous than Tiger Woods, arguably. I mean, they're, they're one and two or two and one, whichever. And um, Trump went to Arnold Palmer's hometown in Pennsylvania over the weekend and got to storytelling. It was one of his rallies. The way he does, if you listen to the Trump rallies, he's always telling you some sort of story. And part of the fun is he's a celebrity. He's been a celebrity his whole life. So he's got a story about everyone and everything. And it's kind of fun to hear his stories about these people since he was in Arnold Palmer's hometown and sort of playing on, hey, Arnold Palmer, a great golfer. He took a turn on his story of Arnold Palmer, though not in the explicit terms the media would have you believe. Oh, the reference was obvious. Here's, here it is. Arnold Palmer was all man. And I say that in all due respect to women, and I love women. But this guy, this guy, this is a guy that was all man. This man was strong and tough. And I refuse to say it, but when... He took showers with the other pros. They came out of there. They said, oh, my God. (laughs) That's unbelievable. (laughs) I had to say it. I had to say it. We have women that are highly sophisticated here. But they used to look at Arnold and say, man, but he was really something special. And I had to tell you the shower part of it because it's, it's true. What can I tell? We want to be honest. We want to be upfront. It's true. I would want submit to, be honest. to the jury that this is part of Trump's comedy routine. Like he's doing stand up and they, the media just doesn't either get it or I don't know. It. Like here's a friend of mine, Jake Tapper, not getting it, not appreciating it over on CNN. You're talking about substantive issues. Is this really the closing message you want voters to hear from Donald Trump stories about Arnold Palmer's penis? Speaker Mike. Well, listen, I, I think that the headline that I read about the rally in, in, in Pennsylvania yesterday was the big question, and it's the one that Kamala Harris has not been able or willing to answer, and that is, are you better off now than you were under the Trump administration four years ago? But and- if President Biden had gone on stage and spoke about the size of a pro golfer's penis, I think you would be on this show right now saying you were shocked and appalled, and you would suggest it was evidence of his cognitive decline. Why is he talking about Arnold Palmer's penis in front of Pennsylvania voters? Jake, you seem to like that line a lot. Let me tell you that I that Donald Trump is doing <laughs> rallies <laughs> now around the country. Let me just say something. <laughs> I don't want okay. to be talking about All this. Right. Donald Trump is out there saying it. I mean, truly, what kind of a former president would take the national stage and make a D reference about another person. Like who, it would cause every media personality to go into full meltdown. I mean, Jake and everyone else, would it not? Mm, Or wait. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. For the listening audience, he was using his hands to show large versus small in accordion style. So what do you guys make of Arnold Palmer references? Eliana? I don't actually think that the media is scandalized by this. I think they know that Trump's appeal is that he's vulgar and funny, and this is precisely what his supporters like about him. Um, What he said was funny and amusing. And it's the kind of thing that people go home and tell their families, you won't believe what he said. (laughs) And people laugh about it. Um, But I think they're saying this because this is the Harris campaign's message. And so they are repeating it in turn. I think they feel compelled to say it because they dislike him so much um, and they want her to win. I don't really think there's more to it than that, but I have a hard time believing that they're really scandalized by that. Um, it mm-hmm. was it was amusing. It was totally in keeping with Trump's personality and his sense of humor. Trump made these jokes in 2016. 
um, during the debates. He, I was there. Uh, I moderated that debate. Right. He and Rubio I was had 10 it feet out away from him. Kind of stuff. Um, it's not like a new thing that's evidence of decline. This is completely in keeping with who he is. Yeah, there. I I will give some credit to David Axelrod for a good tweet in response, who wrote, um, "Wonder if Trump will continue to ask talk about Arnold Palmer's long game." <laughs> he said the whole weird the whole weird episode raises two questions: Why is this such a fascination with Trump? And two, can we ever again innocently say, "Give me an Arnold Palmer"? <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's um, good. There is a fair amount of maybe feigned disdain for the comment in the media today, though, Emily, same as there is feigned disdain for his, quote, disrespect, as Tim Wall said, toward McDonald's workers and showing up at their place of 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 employment and doing their job and learning about their job and calling national attention to how hard they work. I mean, virtually. Yeah, exactly. And which he did. He kept repeating like, this is a hard job. It's a hard job. I see what these guys are doing. I love McDonald's every ounce of it. He kept repeating that nobody in the rest of the country is interpreting the uh, stunt. It's a campaign stunt. Of course, everybody knows that nobody's stupid, but nobody is interpreting it in the way that the media is. I mean, what maybe like a couple of resistance uh, wine moms are, but not the rest of the country. And it's the same thing with what CNN referred to as a vulgar anecdote about genitalia that was on the Chiron as Jake Tapper was speaking. And you just have this out of body moment watching Donald Trump with a bunch of guys in hard hats behind him. And then CNN referring to a very, very innocuous anodyne joke as a quote, vulgar anecdote about genitalia. It's like, have you guys stepped outside of your newsroom to do anything normal with people that doesn't involve like you reporting on them, like they're zoo creatures in the last 10 years. Have you actually sat down for a meal or beer with somebody in a normal part of America where that's appealing to? Have you thought about this at all? I mean, I think that's to Eliana's point, it's being pushed by the Harris campaign, which is why the media is just more primed to think it's important and to latch onto it and regurgitate it. But nobody in the rest of the country would listen to what he just said. I mean, maybe there's, I I shouldn't deny, I mean, I think there are some people, especially probably like affluent suburban women who don't like that and roll their eyes and it does make them less likely to vote for Trump or whatever. But that's a small part of the country. Most people watching that would think it was funny or would never think to put it in a headline and be the big takeaway. I think Mike Johnson actually had a great line there. I, I, they wouldn't think that that was the takeaway from the rally. So it's just the media being completely, completely out of touch after now having 10 years, 10 years, we're at, well, I guess eight years, almost a full decade to reckon with what Donald Trump was shoving in front of their face. Um, And more than 10 years since the Great Recession and since some of these fissures became completely obvious, their lack of understanding of the rest of the country became completely obvious. And they're getting worse, not better, which is really depressing. I mean, I uh, I think Trump meant it as a compliment. You know, he was trying to tell a nice story about (laughs) show me the man who does not want that kind of thing being said about him. I mean, that's just the truth. (laughs) He thought he was paying an homage to this great golfer in his hometown. Like, in addition to all the great things you already know about him, there's this one, too. I agree with you. I think there's a certain collection of women in particular who won't like it. I don't think it has to do with the affluence. It has to do with probably older, older women who are Mm. more, you know, proper than say we are and, uh, or I am. And um, maybe, uh, maybe like evangelicals, I don't know. They're, they seem to have forgiven Trump for all of his other, you know, comments along those lines. So I, I doubt this is going to cause most problems. Imagine waking up one day to find out your home no longer belongs to you. That somewhere, someplace, uh, somebody's stolen your property right out from under you. It sounds unthinkable, but it is a sad reality for some American homeowners, and it's a risk for anyone who owns property. House stealing, that's what the FBI calls it. It's a form of real estate fraud where scammers leverage loopholes in the system to fraudulently transfer your home's title into their name. And then they take out loans against your property or even sell it behind your back. By the time you find out, the scammer's long gone, leaving you, the legitimate homeowner, to clean up the mess. But right now, triple lock protection is available through HomeTitleLock.com, offering 24-7 title monitoring, alerts, and restoration services. You can sign up today at HomeTitleLock.com and use the promo code MEGAN to get 30 days of protection for free and a comprehensive title scan 
right now to make sure you're not already a victim. That's promo code Megan, M-E-G-Y-N, and hometitlelock.com, or just use the link below. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.